Hello, and welcome to the second episode of The History of Astronomy by Stello. Last time, we discussed ancient Mesopotamians, their view of the world, their mathematical and scientific contributions to astronomy, and the complex weave of gods that they built up around the stars. Today, we turn to a civilization further down the Mediterranean coast, home to great peoples built up around the Nile, the giver of life in the midst of arid desert. Today, we'll be taking a look into the ancient Egyptian civilization, their complex calendars, religious beliefs, and monumental structures. Herodotus, a Greek historian, was the first to refer to Egypt as the gift of the Nile, as the civilization's survival depended almost entirely on the river, which flooded yearly, predictably fertilizing the area around it. Kemet, as it would have been known to the ancient Egyptians, was exceedingly stable, much more so than its counterparts. For over 4,000 years, with minor disturbances in between, it existed in more or less the same form, while neighboring civilizations constantly arose and fell in flames. Because of the Nile floods, and the high agricultural potency of the region, Egypt developed a dense population early on, centered around the Nile and its delta. Unperturbed for countless centuries, they developed an advanced system of mathematics and erected some of the most impressive structures known to man, many of which stand to this day. Their religion, science, and arts were all very highly advanced, and due to a combination of these factors, they were able to hold off the sea peoples that brought about the Bronze Age collapse. Though weakened, they continued to prosper while prominent civilizations, such as those of the Hittites and the Macedonians, withered into irrelevance. Regardless, Egypt continued to be an essential center of worldwide trade, exporting gold, linen, papyrus, and manufactured goods, while importing obsidian, incense, oil, myrrh, and various other commodities. Any discussion of Egyptian astronomy must begin with Nabta Playa, one of, if not the, oldest archaeoastronomical devices anywhere in the world. Dating to 7000 BC, it is far older than the Egyptian Old Kingdom, likely being built by nomadic herders to mark the summer solstice and subsequent monsoons. In ancient times, the region was also home to a great lake, no doubt an attraction for herders looking to water their animals. Because of Naphtapai's orientation, historians have suggested that the structure originally indicated the rising of certain stars, notably Sirius. Its shape, too, is resemblant of Orion's belt, and the slabs upon it would have allowed the nomads to predict the direction of the summer solstice sunrise. Following the construction of Naphtapai, several megaliths were constructed in and around the site, aligning to various other stars in the sky, possibly including Arcturus, Alpha Centauri, and the Orion Belt. Indeed, the ancient Egyptians were constructing intricate astronomical structures from the very dawn of civilization itself. Sometime around 3150 BC, Menes, according to Egyptian tradition, is thought to have unified Upper and Lower Egypt. After a period of around 400 years, the 4th dynasty pharaoh, Khufu, was immortalized to the Great Pyramid of Giza, built in the 26th century BC, over a period of 30 years, reaching an immense height of 146.5 meters with its limestone shell, a metric which would not be beaten for almost 4,000 years. The placement and orientation of the pyramids, however, was not an accident. Indeed, they were aligned to several celestial bodies, among these the Pole Star. To the Egyptians, however, this would not have been Polaris, but Alpha Draconis instead, due to the precession of the equinoxes. At the Temple of Amun-Re, a corridor was specially built such that only the rising of the midwinter sun would illuminate it fully. At all other times, it would remain only partially lit. The Egyptians also lined the pyramids with the four cardinal directions, such that their corners were only a fraction of a degree away from the true axes. Additionally, several air shafts were constructed, being aligned with special stars or areas of the sky, notably Hesirius, which marked New Egyptian Year. The shaft's purpose is unknown, perhaps they are connected to the cycle of life and death, or related to ascension rituals. Nevertheless, the fascinating construction of the pyramids is a wonderful insight into the true depth of knowledge that the architects of the Pyramid of Giza had about the stars. The Egyptians initially used a lunar calendar, utilizing a side-rail calendar to regulate it. 
However, soon, there were discrepancies between the lunar and solar years, and the Egyptians were forced to come up with a new solution. They developed a complex civil calendar, being 365 days long and divided into 12 months of 30 days in length. The primary purpose of this calendar was to provide a unified system of timekeeping for Egyptian society, with the lunar calendar being reserved for religious purposes. Being a primarily dry climate, the Egyptians partitioned their calendar based on the flooding of the Nile. Akhet, the flood season, was from September to January. Peret, the winter season, was from January to May. Shemu, the summer season, was from May to September. Contrary to what might, might expect, the Egyptian New Year began on the first day of Akhet, marking the start of the Nile floods. Coincidentally, Sirius reappeared on this day, leading historians to believe that the calendar may have been developed from astronomical observations of the star. There were further intricacies of the Egyptian calendar that are of note. For one, since the Egyptians had 12 months of 30 days, they made up for the remaining five days of the calendar with an intercalary month. During this period, great festivities would be held, celebrating the births of Nephthys, goddess of air, Isis, counterpart to Osiris and the embodiment of cosmic order, Horus, god of the sky, Set, god of violence, disorder, and storms, and Osiris, god of fertility, agriculture, life, and resurrection. The Egyptians did not have unique names for months of the year, rather affixing them to the season in which they took place. For example, July was the third month of Peret, the winter season, and it was denoted as such. There were also problems with the Egyptian calendar, the same faced by many early calendars. Because the Egyptian year was one-fourth of a day too short, every four years, the appearance of Sirius became a day misaligned with the Egyptian New Year. After 1,460 years, the star would finally rise on the correct day, and this was met with great celebration and festivities. To solve this problem, Ptolemy III later attempted to add a leap day, similar to the Julian calendar, every four years. However, the Egyptian populace and priests resisted the change, and the plan was eventually scrapped. Besides the calendar, the Egyptians came up with a novel system of dividing the ecliptic plane. They segregated the sky into 36 separate groups of stars, known as decans, meant to aid astronomical observations and horological predictions. Every 10 days, a new decan appeared at dawn. This was used by the Egyptians as a measure of side real time, as well as a subdivision of the year and days, allowing for an eventual system of splitting the day into 12 daytime and 12 nighttime hours. Later, Hellenic influences led to these decans gaining a degree of symbolic significance. Each began to represent various things and concepts, such as the cardinal directions, the four elements, and so on. As in most other ancient civilizations, astronomy and astrology were extremely important to cultural and religious practices, for the Egyptians more so than most. One example of this is the Egyptian concept of the afterlife, which was believed to be intimately connected and nestled within the stars. Accordingly, intricate star maps were constructed on tomb ceilings, thought to guide the dead to the afterlife, and also to serve as a temporal and positional guide for the living world. Calendars, besides being exceedingly important for agriculture and other such productive activities, were also essential to the planning of religious festivals and special occasions. Additionally, Astronomical phenomena and the reappearance of certain stars or decans within the night sky dictated many ancient Egyptian events, a testament to the value of astronomy to them. The Egyptians also created a precise sundial and stellar clock, allowing for one to record the passing of the daytime hours, as well as a unique water clock, used to tell time and serve as a stopwatch of sorts. The gods, too, were linked with the stars, with many being ascribed to particular deities, Isis, for example, was associated with the star Sirius, the herald of the Nile floods. The cosmological view of the Egyptians is equally associated with astronomy, and in many ways is similar to that of the Sumerians. Above all, the Egyptians believed in the concept of Ma'at, the cosmic order holding the universe together. With it, there would be truth, order, and justice, yet, in its absence, 
only darkness and chaos would prevail. They view time as linear, however, they saw the renewal of Ma'at as a recurring concept within its bounds. Such renewals would occur with the daily journey of Ra, the god of the sun, the flooding of the Nile, the crowning of a new dynasty, and so on. These were seen to be prosperous events, restoring order and banishing chaos in the world. Their view of the world was decidedly geocentric. They thought of Earth as a flat plain, represented by Geb, over which rested the element of air, represented by Shu, and the sky, complete with all its stars and various phenomena, represented by Nut. Interestingly, the Egyptians also believed in a parallel underworld, which lay beneath the Earth, complete with its own undersky. Beneath this was an infinite expanse of chaos, Nu. Within the entire fold, they believed in the Duat, a place of rebirth and renewal. Here, Ra, after traveling to the underside of the earth, would be reborn, rising anew at dawn. Indeed, the ancient Egyptian understanding of the universe was vast. From structures aligned perfectly with distant stars to a system of timekeeping exceptionally close to what is used today, astronomy was a vital component of their civilization. Forged in the banks of the Nile, Egypt, known for millennia as a center of culture, art, and science, pushed the field of astronomy forward in novel ways, shaping our understanding of the world today. Thanks for watching this episode of The History of Astronomy by Stello.